Well, good day, viewers. Good day. And welcome to Knowles Garden Tractors and Firewood today. So, cloudy again today. And they're saying risk of showers or drizzle. Well, we had a bit of that a little while ago. Anyway, that's uh, just the way it is. That's The weather is just not... <laughs> Just not cooperating to be outside to do anything. I did do a wee little bit yesterday afternoon. It kind of warmed up, and I had me loader yesterday, uh, picking up a few things and moving stuff. And I had a couple of uh, ash piles that I picked up the ash from my wood stove, and uh, I dumped those in my little gardens up by the door and. And uh, a few little things like that. And, uh, but again today, it's just not pleasant to be outside. So we'll have a look at the weather here. And have a look at the weather. So it's saying five degrees Celsius. 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are north, north, northwest at 11 miles an hour, so not a whole lot of wind today. So that's good. And we're supposed to get up to 6, with going from 5 now to, to up to 6. I don't think we'd see any difference. <laughs> so, yeah, a chance of showers and drizzle. Or drizzle, anyway. And tomorrow is no better. But Saturday and Sunday is looking better. And then next week is, is looking not bad either. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So anyway, that is the weather. It's, uh... It's just going to stay kind of off, I think, for the next while. Even though it's looking a little better for next week. If it has north winds like it normally does this time of year, it's still going to be cool. Anyway, what else am I up to here today? Well, today is kind of a... A short little, a short little mini rant day. And then it'll be uh, story time. So, I got this going yesterday. It wasn't too bad to get going. Same old gas, same old stuff in it all from last year. Anyway, it's running, so that's good. So my, my mini little rant today is... When you buy something brand new and you have to take it home, or when you take it home, you have to fix it or modify it. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've, I've had that happen to me quite often. Just a uh, part not well made or, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, brand new, no good. <laughs> I just can't understand that, but anyway, even this here. Now, this is only a $2 flag that my son wanted, so I got it for him just here to, today. And uh, what I use these flags at uh, my father's and my grandfather's gravestones. They, they were veterans. So, when you buy these flags, they're only $2. Well, you know, that's fine. But anyway, why is it that when they make these flags that they don't put something on here to hold them in that position? So if you take it out of the package and you put it upwards like you normally would, I'll do it now. You normally would Put the flag up like that, right? Well, 
the flag then slides down the pole, down to there. They have nothing holding the flag in place. I can, and I can kind of understand their thinking, maybe, because if it's not attached here, then the flag, the seam, will turn around to where, whichever way the, uh, the wind is blowing. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they think that far ahead. Anyway, what, what gets me is that you put it up somewhere and the flag slides down the pole. <laughs> So every time I buy these flags, and I've bought a lot of them over the years because they fade and rip and everything in the wind and so on, I have to put my <laughs> my favorite stuff. My favorite stuff, I have to put this on. So I put a little bit around the top and squeeze it into the flag, and then I put a little bit around the bottom here and squeeze it into the flag. And and that stops it from going down. Well, not a big deal, but I mean, holy cats, here you're buying something that's brand new, and you take it home and you got to fix it. <laughs> I don't know if that happens to you people or not, but anyway. Tell us your stories if you have ever run into something like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's enough of the rant, so. <laughs> oh, well. All right, story time. A uh, quick little story here. Here is a cedar chest. This cedar chest is a 1946 cedar chest. My aunt had this since she was uh, 16 years old. And she got it in 1946. So it could have been made in 45, I don't know. But anyway, she, she just loved that thing right up until the end. That was, that was one of her prized possessions. And I believe they were called hope chests, I think, at one time too, maybe. Anyway, my aunt passed away. She was 90 years old. And she's been gone now for, uh, I'd say, probably four years. Yeah, about four years, maybe. Anyway, my cousin's wife wanted it. And this, this was done years ago. My aunt and her decided that this was going to go to her when she passed away, my aunt. So, um, I've had it stored here since my aunt's passing. And the, the person that's getting this lives in Ottawa. So, I guess it's going to go to Ottawa maybe tomorrow. Now, my cousin uh, has passed away too. He's been gone uh, I'd say 14 years probably. Anyway, it, it's his wife that's going to get it. So anyway, this is what's going on. So somebody that she knows is coming from Nova Scotia to Prince Edward Island to pick this up tomorrow maybe. And then sometime along the way it'll get up to Ottawa apparently. So... That's the story on that. Well, I don't know. I, I can't open it, I guess. I don't think this... You push on the button. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so... There now. It even has the key. And the guarantee, look at that. Yeah. 
insurance policy in the sum of $250. Well, jump of $250 bucks was a lot of money back in 1946. Anyway, I don't even know what she had in this. But it has a little shelf there. Apparently cedar was good for uh, repelling bugs. I think that's why they're made out of cedar, from what I think I wrote, read somewhere, but that I am not sure on either. Anyway, it's been around a long time. And like I say, I had it stored in my basement up on a high shelf. And uh, I put it up there with, I think, probably my son helped me. But anyway, it, uh, it certainly wasn't very easy to take down and carry out here, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> it's, it either got heavier or it got weaker, one or the other. <laughs> anyway, uh, just something different to show you. It's in reasonable shape for, uh, from 1946. You know, it's got some blemishes up on the top. You know, a little piece of something nicked it a bit there. Anyway, my aunt will be happy to see it going to wherever it's supposed to go. So, Chesley Chair Company Limited, Chesley, Ontario. So. Heirloom chests. Yep. All right. So there you go. You put it down and it locks into place. Now, the lady that's getting this, I don't know what she's going to do with it either, but anyway, it makes no difference to me. But I don't know if she has a spot for it or not, which she must have if she's taking it, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> so hopefully the fella comes and takes it tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm not dragging it back downstairs. <laughs> Two marks on it here and there. It's probably only moved um, it might have only been moved a half a dozen time in, times in its lifetime since my aunt had it. She only moved a few times in her lifetime at different places so Anyway, there we go. All right, let's see if this Rassy Ferguson character will start up just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. I got me fire going again today, too. And the fire will be on tomorrow. And it's going to be cold. There now. Yeah. Oops. Wrong way, Jose. All right, let's see if it'll start. So, fuel off and choke fully on. Key on, that helps. Okay.
Still have to do some more adjustments, I guess. Now it's been mentioned about the float setting, and that that could be. But I'd really rather not take apart a, a brand new carburetor. And then have the room the gasket, and then there I am, I don't have the gasket. <laughs> And it was also mentioned of a vacuum leak. Well, that could be too. And it's also my thought that it could be low on compression. And I can't get off of it. <laughs> there we go. Um, the other thing would be is that if it was electric start, it might start because it would be turning faster. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's do a compression check. I guess just in case. I don't know what it's going to do for me. There's no compression, this is no compression. No tools, where's all the tools go? The tools that I don't see that go high. This engine has had the rings put in it a number of years ago. When I say a number, I mean about probably 10, I guess. It used to, well, it was so worn out, it used to foul the plug all the time. And you'd, be, you'd be going along. Uh, uh, but in the grass is just all of a sudden too quick. So I always had a spare plug with me. And I, I knew exactly what was wrong. So you take the, the fouled plug out and put in the clean plug and away you go. So the plug would be wet and oil soaked and whatever. And she was wore it, you know, then so. So now that's what the plug looks like. And if you can see, let me see if I can see it here. Yeah. Get some focus on it, maybe. Don't seem to have much light there, do I? Let's try some light. Try some light. There we are. There we are. It's black, but it's not oil soaked. It's not gas soaked either. But the tip, the tip is good. So that's running reasonable for a flathead engine. Anyway, I'll do a quick test on the compression just to the front of it. And uh, let's see. Oh. I guess we'll have to find the compression tester. I'll have to shut this off here and I'll get back to you when and if I find it. All right, so I guess it seems I don't have the compression tester. My son has it, so I guess that's out for 
Anyway, we'll see what we're going to do here at some point, I guess. I don't know if I want to take that apart or not. All right, okay. Well, put that back in. I suppose I could just do a little, if I'm close enough here, I could maybe pull it over and put my thumb over it and see if it won't tell me anything, but... Compression, but I like to say I don't know how much it's got, so and it must have compression at some point or some much because it does run once you get it going. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's probably all I can do. I don't have it. My son says he has it, so and I don't know why he has it, but he says he doesn't know why either, so there you go. So I guess that's all that we have for you today. And uh, hopefully you like my little story on the, the cedar hope chest. All right, goodbye now. Thanks for watching. All right, I did a little bit more to the Massey Ferguson character. I uh, adjusted the idle mixture screw mower uh, out to give it more fuel. And uh, sure enough, on the second pull, it ran. So, with no throttle, full choke. So I'll uh, leave it now and then tomorrow I'll try it again and see if it does the same thing. And if it does, well then it's probably going to continue to work like that. And if it doesn't, then we'll see what's what, I guess. <laughs> and turn it out more, I don't know. Anyway, I might get the compression tester on the weekend from my son and maybe do that next week. So we'll see what's what, I guess. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I can say I probably will have to wait around for the fellow to come from Nova Scotia to pick up that oak test. Hopefully. He supposedly is off for the next four days, so if he can't come tomorrow, then maybe he will come on Saturday, which isn't a good day for me. But I guess I would have to make make do with that. Or he could come on Sunday if he wanted to. Tomorrow would be best for, for my liking, but I don't know if that's good for his liking. And I guess I'd have to do pretty well anything to get it out of here. As, uh, like I say, I don't want to drag it back downstairs. So, I guess that's about it again. <laughs> um, I'll shut this up. I'll shut you off here again, and uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I guess the content isn't that great lately. <laughs> it's hard to come up with stuff, holy cats. 
anyway, that's the way it goes. Um, hopefully next week will be nicer. I'd like to get back to the wood cutting over at my son's place. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'd like to get at that, uh, muffler project too, but like I say, I've got an awful lot of things that i got to get done that I, that were ahead of this muffler plan, but the muffler plan gets kind of more interesting. I got to fix my trailer, my poor trailer. I need to get all the floor up out of that and get wood sawed up from somewhere and, and put wood in it. And, and it needs this and it needs that and it needs the other thing and it just needs a general going over to be able to use it and to be able to get it inspected. So. Anyhow, uh, have a good day wherever you are at and whatever you are doing. And we'll see you again. There may not be any video tomorrow or Saturday. Be back to the Sunday fireside, or Sunday fireless chat. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, son and I are going to be apparently tree digging on Saturday. He wants to dig up a bunch of trees. I don't know if it's going to be cherry trees or spruce trees. And then plant them along the edge of his property line. So that's what's going to take place Saturday, I think. And... Uh, I would say that grass cutting might be next weekend. Maybe. At his place, anyway, maybe. Anyway, that's about it for today. So I'll let you go. I'm rambling and going on like I normally do. So uh, I'm very thankful that you put up with that and put up with me rambling. And going on foolish. <laughs> All right, goodbye now.